The 1980s were a time of blockbuster movies, dancing, and new styles. But while we were captivated by the latest trends, something dangerous was happening right above us, a looming disaster that had everyone in a panic. It was front page news, a growing crisis threatening life on Earth. Scientists warned that the sky itself was disappearing, exposing us to dangerous ultraviolet radiation. But why don't we hear about it anymore? Whatever happened to the hole in the ozone layer? To understand the problem, we have to go back to the beginning. The ozone layer is a thin but powerful shield located high in the Earth's stratosphere that protects all life from the sun's most dangerous ultraviolet radiation. Without it, the sun's UV rays would bombard the planet, causing an explosion of skin cancer cases, destroying crops, and wreaking havoc on ecosystems. But in the 1970s, scientists started noticing something alarming. The ozone layer was thinning. And by the mid-1980s, the discovery of a massive hole in the ozone layer over Antarctica shocked the world. 40% of the ozone layer had vanished in just a few decades. It was more than just an environmental concern. It was a global crisis. The cause? A group of chemicals called chlorofluorocarbons. Developed in the 1920s, CFCs were considered revolutionary. These man-made chemicals were non-toxic, non-flammable, and incredibly stable. They became wildly popular for use in refrigerators, air conditioners, aerosol sprays, and even foam insulation. CFCs were seen as the perfect solution, especially compared to earlier, more dangerous chemicals like ammonia and sulfur dioxide. CFCs were everywhere, used in homes, businesses, and industries across the globe. By the 1970s, the production of these chemicals was booming, turning it into a multi-billion dollar industry. But there was a hidden cost. What made CFCs so useful, their stability and resistance to breaking down, was also their most dangerous feature. In the lower atmosphere, CFCs are harmless. But when they drift up into the stratosphere, they're exposed to ultraviolet radiation from the sun. This breaks them apart, releasing chlorine atoms that set off a chain reaction, destroying ozone molecules one by one. Shockingly, a single chlorine atom can destroy tens of thousands of ozone molecules before it's neutralized. This wasn't just a slow process. In the Antarctic spring, something unique was happening. The extreme cold of the winter, combined with specific weather conditions, created polar stratospheric clouds. These clouds supercharged the reactions that depleted ozone, and as a result, every year, the ozone layer thinned dramatically, creating a hole that grew larger with each passing spring. The implications were terrifying. With less ozone to filter UV radiation, humans would face a massive spike in skin cancer. Plants, including essential crops like wheat and rice, would suffer, leading to food shortages. Entire ecosystems could collapse, and the hole wasn't limited to Antarctica. Scientists feared similar damage could spread across the globe. But not everybody was ready to accept these findings. The chemical industry, especially companies that produce CFCs, pushed back hard. After all, CFCs were their bread and butter, and the potential ban on their products posed a significant financial threat. Industry lobbyists questioned the science, launched campaigns to sow doubt, and even accused scientists like Mario Molina and Sherwood Rowland, the chemists who first raised the alarm, of being alarmists, or worse, of working with foreign governments like the KGB. They dismissed the predictions of catastrophe, claiming that phasing out CFCs would be economically devastating. The public was confused. Was this just another overblown environmental scare? Could these seemingly harmless chemicals really be responsible for a global crisis? But then, the data became undeniable. By 1985, satellite imagery confirmed the existence of a massive ozone hole over Antarctica. Images of the thinning ozone were broadcast worldwide, making the invisible danger very visible. People could see for themselves, the planet's protective shield was disappearing. The public outcry grew louder. Skin cancer was a direct and personal threat that people could understand, and the link between CFCs and the ozone hole became clear. Governments could no longer ignore the crisis. In an unlikely turn of events, two conservative leaders, Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher, took up the cause. Despite their usual resistance to regulation, both leaders understood the gravity of the situation. Reagan, who had suffered from skin cancer, and Thatcher, a trained chemist, recognized that inaction would have devastating consequences. The political momentum led to the Montreal Protocol in 1987, a historic global agreement that mandated the phase-out of CFCs and other ozone-depleting substances. Every country signed on, making it the first and only treaty in history to achieve universal ratification. But even as governments agreed to phase out CFCs, the fight wasn't over. The chemicals that replaced CFCs, hydrofluorocarbons, or HFCs, didn't destroy ozone, but were potent greenhouse gases contributing to climate change. Recognizing this, the Montreal Protocol was amended in 2016 to include HFCs in its ban, showing that the world was still learning and adapting from the ozone crisis. So, whatever happened to the hole in the ozone layer? The Montreal Protocol worked. 
Since its adoption, the production and use of CFCs have plummeted, and the ozone layer has slowly begun to heal. Scientists expect the ozone hole to fully close by the middle of this century. It's one of the greatest environmental success stories in history, a moment when the world came together to solve a global crisis. But the story doesn't end there. The fight to protect our atmosphere is ongoing, especially as we face the larger challenge of climate change. The lessons from the ozone crisis are clear. When the problem is personal, perceptible, and the solutions are practical, we can act. The Montreal Protocol showed us what's possible when we unite behind a common goal. Now the question is, can we do it again? That's where Forever Green comes in. Our app empowers individuals to take meaningful action against climate change by tracking their carbon footprint and providing simple, practical ways to reduce it. From offsetting emissions through verified carbon credits to adopting more sustainable habits, Forever Green makes it easy to be a part of the solution. Download our app linked in the description below so that you can start to take control of your impact and make a real change.